the worst one. This is the worst one. You know what? That's probably the reason why I don't have a foundation empty. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and one year of empties. It's a lot of skincare and some makeup, some makeup. I did film one year of makeup and skincare empties at the end of 2020 and this year feels like it's passed so fast but filming that video feels like a distant, distant memory <laughs> but it exists. I remember in that video I had like a ton of little samples of stuff like small deluxe size samples of skincare and makeup and whatnot that I used up because I was still trying to find what I like but I believe this year I used a lot more like full-sized things because I found products that I trust and this is how I predicted my empties would look different this year. All right, let's uh let's just get into it. I'm going to move through each of these. I'll talk about makeup first and then I'll talk about skincare and through each of these things I'll go through them by category. Well, here are all of my empties. Everything like all of this and there's even some off of the the frame. These are all my skincare empties of the year. It's a lot of consumption. Um I'll, I'll talk about it later, but most of this I used, some of it is body care, some of it was on my face, and some of it was with my husband, but not that much. So, all the skincare. Uh, in this bag, I have all the makeup empties from this year. So let's start with the makeup. I'll run through it pretty quickly, and then uh, let's go through categories of skincare. All right, here are all my makeup empties of the year. It's a lot of mascara, a lot of brow product, because those are just things you naturally go through faster, and some other random things. So, I don't have any foundation empties, but I have this NYX Bear With Me skin, skin Veil that I'm like pretty close to using up but I couldn't I couldn't use it up by the end of the year so uh tough luck I don't have any foundation empties the closest thing I have is this Dr. Jart Sick Pair the the tiger grass color correcting treatment that green one and uh this was horrible I really hated it uh, <laughs> I I got it because you know back in the beginning of 2020 even this was really hyped up on TikTok and all that kind of stuff but it is just so dry so crusty it doesn't spread well it tugs on my skin pretty much everything bad so i just finished the sample size this little mini one out of spite but i'm never repurchasing this i guess i'll talk about brows real quick i actually have the merit beauty brow gel that is definitely an empty but i couldn't find that empty anywhere so i i bet i threw that away but some other brow gels that i completed i have three i have this Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel. It's just a clear one and this one is very good. So oftentimes just tinted brow gels do it for me. So I probably won't repurchase this brow gel, not because it's not good, but just because it's clear and I don't really need that. And then I have the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel in the shade Dark Brown, which is a dupe for the Glossier Boy Brow, like very close. And I also have the uh, Benefit gimme brow whatever it's all rubbed off the label but it's just a tinted brow gel in the brown color like i think it was number four that i got pretty much most tinted brow gels work for me my favorite right now that is actually on its last leg it's almost an empty is the elf wow brow in the shade soft black and um and i and i like the shade dark brown too i just happen to have black right now so those are my brow gels and then <laughs> this is not really an empty it kind of is you can see the the scrapings and the emptiness inside but there's a bunch on the wall that I'm really not gonna gonna go above and beyond to get out. This is the um, Cabral by Benefit. It's it's their brow gel and a couple pencils from Benefit. I, I ordered this Benefit like pack, like a value pack at the beginning of 2020, and I just have all these empties now at the end of this year. As well as the ColourPop Precision Brow Pencil. Not my favorite. I probably wouldn't repurchase this because it's too creamy. Um, it doesn't really stay in place. So those are my brow empties. Next, let's just do mascaras. I have uh, one, two, three. Let's, let's do. I have three uh, minis and I have five full size. And I am pretty resistant to like throwing away mascaras that are old, but usually around like six months, I'm like, oh, I guess I could think about, you know, throwing this one away. But usually it, it ends up being around eight months. And I have maybe three mascaras or four mascaras open at a time usually. So out of the, I'm just gonna name what these are real quick. I have the Nabla Major Pleasure Mascara, the Glossier Lash Slick, the Petite and Pretty Mascara I got in a BoxyCharm forever ago, the Waterproof Essence Lash Princess, 
and Wonder Beauty Mile High Club, the gold one in the full sizes. And my minis are the Maybelline Lash Sensational, the Ilia, whatever it's called, and the Too Faced Damn Girl. All right, so there are definitely mascaras in here that I really like and that I really, really dislike. So let me just tell you what those are instead of going through all of them. So in terms of really like, I think there's only really one in here that I would repurchase. And that is the Wander Beauty Mile High Club. It's a tubing mascara. It really, really lengthens. Uh, I like it a lot. And everything else, besides the ones that were bad, were like mediocre. So I, I don't really need to run through my review of each of them. Now I'm gonna name two mascaras in here that are like actually bad. <laughs> and for me, the worst one. This is the worst one. The Waterproof Essence Lash Princess. The formula is just so, so different from the green tube one. The waterproof one is just so like goopy and it just left like like chunks of mascara on my lashes that were impossible to brush out because it would just get worse and worse. So this is one that I threw into my bag of like empties as trash, like after maybe five attempts of using it. So this I would never purchase again. Not great. And another one that like wasn't great. Uh, I don't know, this Too Faced Damn Girl mascara, the brush is just way too fat and my eyes are small, okay? I have small eyes, so this just is not made for me. That's okay, I don't need to buy it again. So those are my mascara empties. Oh, I actually have a new mascara. It's not an empty, but I just wanna mention it. This Clio Kill Lash Super Proof Mascara, its whole thing is that it's really, really, really waterproof, like you're not getting this off your lashes, and this is, amazing. It is very waterproof. I cry a lot, um, just in general, and this does not budge. And it, I, I think I'm just gonna, I think I want to try out more Korean mascaras because obviously they're made for me more than mascaras like these are. So anyways, I'm really enjoying this one. I kind of wanted to throw this in here, even though it's not an empty, it's relevant. And I have just two lip products in here. Y'all know that I did like a huge lip declutter. I got rid of like 80% of my lip products, but I do have a couple empties. I have the Clinique Black Honey Classic, it's a mini, and this uh, lip oil I got in some subscription box from Tipsy, and it wasn't great. It kind of dried out my lips, but I just finished these because they were in a project pan that I uh, never carried through with. <laughs> okay, and then a uh, little like miscellaneous, some miscellaneous eye things. I have the Pixi Weili Huang. There's a dual-ended eyeliner thing, and so on this side it was a like a felt tip liner, and then on this side was the best the best black eyeliner that I've ever used. And actually, no, the L'Oreal, the L'Oreal, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a L'Oreal pencil liner that's actually equally as good. So it's called like the Lay Signature Eyeliner. I don't know. <laughs> it's the one with the black, the black body and the gold uh, lid. So I'm not gonna repurchase this, but I'm glad to have had it. A Velour Lash Glue, it was fine. <laughs> And this is not really an empty, but I did use a lot of it. Like, look at how much use. There's just a little bit that the brush actually can't get to. This is the, the Stila Shimmer and Glow in Starlight. It's a beautiful highlighting shade, but I don't really use liquid shadows anymore. So again, wouldn't we purchase? I guess my last empty is this teeny weeny Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. I never use setting spray anymore. So those are all of my makeup empties. Um, it's really not impressive. In 2021, I clearly did not wear a lot of makeup except for mascara and brows. Let's move on to skincare. Let's talk about cleansers first. Okay, cleansers. I really only have like, <laughs> apparently I went through three of these. These are the Fourth Ray Beauty uh, BFD cleansing oil. Dang, I really went through three of these. And I mean, this was hands down my favorite cleansing oil. It still kind of is, but I haven't repurchased it because it's not available at Ulta anymore and that's really annoying. And I pretty much buy most of my stuff from Ulta or Sephora. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a really great cleansing oil. I just need to go out of the way to buy it from ColourPop's site now. I'm, I'm using a bunch of other things. I'm using like the Dermalogical Oil Cleanser now. I'm using the Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm for days I'm not wearing makeup, just sunscreen. I have like a few cleansing balms that have been sent to me and I'm trying to work my way through them. So I have like, five other like first cleanse products. So I'm not gonna repurchase this, but if, it, if, it, if I were a normal consumer and I didn't get any PR or anything like that, then I would probably go out of my way to repurchase this again. I have a couple second cleanses, gel-based or water-based cleansers. There's the La Roche-Posay Effaclear. This is a 2% salicylic acid cleanser, loved it. 
I always need some sort of 2% salicylic acid cleanser in my life. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be this one, <laughs> but um, I, I, re I really liked it. It wasn't stripping surprisingly. This one is pretty good. I would repurchase that, yeah. And the fresh soy cleanser was really nice. It smells like cucumbers, uh, just really refreshing. So I liked all of these. Nice. All right, next I have serum and treatment products. So three of these are vitamin C products. I'll talk about them first. So I went through two of the Timeless 20% vitamin C. It's a great vitamin C and I always recommend it. Um, a couple that I'm using right now, I'm using the Dermatology vitamin C and the May Love Glow Maker vitamin C. Um, I have both of those, they were sent to me, so I'm not repurchasing this one right now, but it, it's a great option and very affordable. It's one I've recommended for a long time. I wanted to try out like a different vitamin C product uh, and this one I got off of YesStyle, it's the Milano CC Serum. It doesn't actually tell you the percent of vitamin C, but just from my experience with it, I would guess that it's about around 15% vitamin C, as in L-ascorbic acid. It was okay, just the container was so difficult to use. Like I had to use like my entire grip strength to squeeze out drops out of the exit here. It was pretty difficult to use, but um, at the very least, it didn't oxidize quickly due to the way it was packaged. Ooh, the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Refining Serum. So this is essentially like, uh, I would say a niacinamide and hyaluronic acid serum with a couple extra goodies like peptides and peach extract. Really nice and very, very, very hydrating. I have a second one of these already that I have yet to get to using, but would recommend. It was good. It was good, good, good. Oh, this one. This is a Pyongkang Yule Acne Cream. So I put this in the serum section because I think it's supposed to be a moisturizer. I'm really not sure, but it is just like a water drop and that's not enough for me to use as like a pure moisturizer. So I used it as a serum, kind of an extra boost of salicylic acid, eh, but I wouldn't repurchase that. The Inky List Alpha Arbutin, this is an ingredient that helps fade post acne hyperpigmentation, of which I have a lot. <laughs> and um, I don't know if I, I feel like I see the most difference with retinol, oh, 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 Retinol, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe I forgot my tretinoin. I'll be right back. Okay, duh, how can I not have a vitamin A product in my in my serum treatment empties? So anyways, I was, I, as I was saying, I feel the ingredient that helps me most with my post-acne scarring is tretinoin. And all like the alpha arbutin, the niacinamide, the vitamin C, it's like supplementary, I guess, to, to this. But definitely not a bad product. It's super affordable too, so I, I would, I would actually honestly recommend all of this stuff. If I finished, if I finished a product, that means I liked it enough to finish it uh, among like the, the large excess I have in my skincare collection. So I would recommend most of this unless I say otherwise. Uh, same thing with the tranexamic acid night treatment. Again, for hyperpigmentation, you can see a theme <laughs> with the products I use. Yeah, it, it kind of smelled like hot dogs though, kind of similarly to how that drunk elephant vitamin C serum smells. I actually might not repurchase this one because I have a product that I like better that uh, that kind of uses the same family of ingredients. So the Good Molecules Discoloration Correcting Serum like completely replaces the Inky List Tranexamic Acid for me. Uh, I think this is $14.99 and the Good Molecules Discoloration Correcting Serum is $12. So it's even more affordable. It comes like in a real glass bottle and it has acetyl tranexam, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm a doctor, I can't pronounce this ingredient. Okay, it's formulated with acetyl tranexamate mesylate. It's a form of tranexamic acid that I don't really, I haven't read papers in terms of its effectiveness or if there are any trials on this, but I liked the milky consistency of this serum. It, it, it kind of helps boost my moisturizers as well. And I'm actually almost done with my second bottle of this, so. Would recommend, I've definitely repurchased this already and I will repurchase it again in the future. All right, last two little serum treatment products. Just these First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. Yeah, they're pretty good. Um, I don't really think they're necessary, but I have another container of these that I'm still using, so I like it enough. And the holy, the holy grail, <laughs> tretinoin cream. So I got this prescribed uh, like literally in January and I, it really helped like reset my skin. I literally have like two uses maybe <laughs> left of this. And after that, I kind of want to try going back to Differin Gel, the 0.1% Adapalene and see if that is enough for my skin. 
to use kind of more on a regular basis after I finish the prescription strength level. So those are all of my serum treatments. Oh, I forgot one serum treatment. This is the iUnique Tea Tree Relief Serum. I, I used this like so long ago. I actually did buy a backup because I really liked it. It's very, very watery. It absorbs instantly. It's not irritating and the scent is not overwhelming. So this one's pretty good too. I actually have another one of these sitting in my, um, my linen closet at this very moment. All right, here's my moisturizer category. It's a big one. There are lots of products in this one, but this is truly one where it's not just me using this much moisturizer in a year. If you do use this much moisturizer, good on you. Your skin probably needs it, but this is combined with my husband and I because my husband, he will, he will not use serums. He will not use cleanser. He will not use sunscreen, but if there's one thing he will use, it is moisturizer and that's a new development for him. So even just that, even just that, it is progress. Okay, so um, let me first talk about like these big ones first. So I have the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion and I started using this on my face. I kind of went away from using it just because I found out that I really like this on my body, but it's very expensive to use for a body lotion, at least for me. It's really not that expensive, but for me, um, I'm like, oh, whatever. If I'm just using it on my body, I might as well use like some generic brand of it. So I have two that I used up for my body of the moisturizing lotion, which is like the compared to CeraVe products. But the brand brand one was used on somebody's face and that is my husband's face. So this is his go-to facial moisturizer. Actually, it's, actually, it's pretty cute. I, I'm kind of happy with that. In terms of the face for me though, I don't use this anymore, not because it, it didn't really make me break out or anything like that, but I just found products that I like way more for my face. And they're not empties, but I just wanna show them to you since we're talking about it. The Vanny Cream Daily Facial Moisturizer has a much smoother, like, creamier, silkier consistency than the CeraVe one, which if y'all have used this, you know, it's like a little bit like, not chunky, but it, it's just, it just doesn't come out like completely smooth. It's really hard to explain. It's not chunky, but not smooth. Uh, but Vanny Cream is smooth, silky, elegant, love it. And this is actually one that I got from YesStyle recently to review. And oh my gosh, these two, like, as soon as I used this on my face, I was like, wow, that is the Vanny Cream moisturizer. This is my favorite Purito moisturizer. I've used like three different moisturizers from them before and this is hands down my favorite. Really, really thin and lightweight. So even for oily combination skin like mine, I use it during the day, especially in the fall and winter. But in Houston, fall and winter means it's still 75 degrees. <laughs> oh, oh, main thing for my husband, big thing is ease of use. So the reason why I haven't given my husband this is because a pump for him is so much easier to use and anything that will get him to actually use some skincare on his face is what I'm going for here. Okay, so those are the three little body things I'm gonna put to the side. Let's talk about my favorite gel moisturizer of which I used one full size and these two mini sizes. The Aveeno Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer. This is amazing. It's a gel, but because it has that oat in it, it doesn't feel like it just disappears off of your face. You actually still feel like you have some moisturizer on after this dries for like 15 minutes or so. And I just really haven't been able to find a gel moisturizer yet that compares to this. I bought that Cetaphil mattifying acne moisturizer because Dr. Dre said that it, it has the same consistency as this. It really doesn't, believe me. The Cetaphil one dries down matte and it. I feel like I need like a little bit of some creamier moisturizer on top of it to match the consistency of this. Okay, let's talk about another one that I have duplicates of. And I actually have, yes, another one of these sitting in my pantry, or not my pantry, my linen closet right now. This is the iUnique Beta Glucan Daily Moisture Cream, a beautiful, soft nighttime cream for me that's not too thick, not suffocating. Uh, it absorbs really fast. It's still the best basic cream that I have. <laughs> I've used it multiple. It's it's a good thing. Oh, and and these are super affordable too. All of my favorites you'll you'll see are extremely effective but affordable because I I don't know. I I kind of think skincare is a scam sometimes because you don't need to pay that much. It's like mascara, right? There are good high-end mascaras, sure, but you don't have to pay 
high-end prices for a good mascara. It's kind of the same thing for me. I know some people have a different philosophy, like, no, skincare is like, you need to pay for the best this or that. And I'm like, girl, it's moisturizer. It is not that, it is not that deep. <laughs> okay, here's another Eye Unique moisturizer that's more popular, but I actually didn't like as much. So that this is all dirty from the vitamin C <laughs> smudging on it, but it's the Eye Unique Centella Calming Gel Cream. It just didn't feel like enough to me. It felt like water that disappeared. Okay, this is actually a really great moisturizer. There are actually two gel moisturizers left. Um, besides the Avena one that I really like. Like I would, I've definitely, I've repurchased the Versed moisturizer. I have in my lifetime purchased three of these. It's the perfect in between for gel and cream. Not like those gel creams that call themselves a gel cream and then they are really just a gel. I, I like can't stand that. So same thing with the Clinique Moisture Surge, the 100 hour auto replenishing hydrator. I was so excited to use this because Mia from Mia's Virtual Vanity, like this is her favorite moisturizer and I can definitely see why. It works great. It works really good. Um, ew, I, ew, I used good as an adverb. If you know, you know. So Clinique, this works really well too. It's just high end price tag, which is why I um, don't recommend it as like, woo, like as heavily as I recommend the Versed one or the Avino one. But if you can get a good deal on Clinique, Clinique is kind of middle of the road pricing in terms of skincare. You can get good deals on this. I was gonna say I left some Korean products for the end, but um, I actually had a lot of Korean products, like all of those I Unique products were Korean. But anyways, these are the mainstream American, I guess, Korean products. I have the Dr. Jart Tea Treatment Moisturizer. It was nice, too expensive. This I used on my husband because he has dry skin, like it will flake off of his face if he doesn't moisturize. And so I used up a Ceramidin cream on him and this really works. It really, really does. This one I bought or I didn't buy it. This one I got from my sister. She gave it to me as a gift, the Water Bank Hydro Gel. And this smells really nice. It smells so like floral and fresh and pretty. It kind of smells like a, like a very, 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 very light perfume, which I know some people hate. I'm pretty neutral about it because I like the way it smells. So I don't really mind it. It's high end pricing and you know, I'm not gonna repeat myself. It's a broken record on that. The uh, Cosrx Advanced Snail 92 All-in-One Cream. So this is snail mucin with silicones that make it kind of more occlusive. And I didn't really like this that much, if I'm being honest. I kind of didn't. Uh, the dry down was a little bit tacky, which is not my favorite. So those are all my moisturizers. Okay, so my last category is going to be sunscreen, which I have a lot of, but let me just get through a couple like mini categories real quick. So first I have for lip balm, just one empty, the Tarte or the Sugar Rush Best Bud Lip Balm in the shade Peony or in the flavor Peony. And this was really nice. It was very, very like thick and occlusive and nourishing, but I wouldn't buy it again because per ounce, it's pretty expensive actually, even though it's only $12 for like one tub. One of these doesn't contain very much product. Therefore, I like I went through the whole thing and I have a lot of lip balms. So that's my only lip balm. Next is a big category for me, which is zit stickers or uh, pimple patches. I called it zit sticker because I looked at the, the name of the brand. Wow, such strong subliminal messaging, but uh, lots of zit stickers. Oh my gosh, I did it again. <laughs> Most of these, like I would rebuy. I have rebought. I have like a couple of these sitting in my linen closet and I've bought the Cosrx ones like a lot, like a ton. I also have backups of these. Uh, the peach slices one I, I bought and used up really fast. I haven't repurchased these, but essentially most hydrocolate patches do the same thing for me. Um, I will say that these zit sticker goo getter spots are the most adhesive. Like a big issue I have with just the main, the original Cosrx ones is that I'll put them on and then they like don't stick very well. I have to make sure to really, really wipe down my skin like clear of any product and stick it on. And even then with the motion of my face, it can peel off but these do not peel off. Like the adhesive is on there. So I would say that these are my favorite. They are actually the most expensive, but I have noticed a true difference in the user experience of these. So anyways, uh, pimple patches, I have a lot of them and I will use a lot of them. Hey, sunscreen. These are all the sunscreens I used up in the year. This is actually mostly me. I would say that it is combined with my husband, but my husband maybe contributed to using up like maybe two of these throughout the year. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll talk about like 
body sunscreen really fast, like super fast first. So first I have the Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Gel. I use this as a body sunscreen because it's very, very thin and um, I don't like it that much because it left my skin feeling sticky, which is the worst. This Neutrogena Hydro Boost. I bought it originally for my face. Oh, my husband and I bought this when we were on our honeymoon in Vegas, actually. So originally bought for our face, but this, ugh, this stings. Yeah, this stings the eyes really badly. So we just ended up using it on our bodies. Next, let's talk about everything else. So I have a couple Paula's Choice sunscreens in here. So first is the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. This is a very, very lightweight sunscreen, um, but not my favorite. I've only, actually I think this is the second tube I've gone through, but since then I've discovered this one, which I'll talk about in a bit. But back to the super light to daily wrinkle defense. It's very lightweight, I will give it that, but my issue with it is that when I apply it and it dries down, it leaves my face feeling tight, like I have a film on top of it, which is the worst. So yeah, not, not repurchasing this one, but this one, oh my gosh. The Paula's Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid. Hands down, hands down, my favorite all chemical facial sunscreen. It comes out like liquid, like actual liquid, which I love. I love thin, fluidy sunscreens and it doesn't break me out. It is SPF 50, so high SPF. It is just so, 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 so nice, even though it's a high-end price tag. So I would repurchase again. Um, my husband and I actually used this one together again. Oh, it was, this was when we visited his family in Seattle and we walked around like a lot when we were there because it was that or public transportation or trying to find parking. It's a lot different than Texas. I always try to give him the best stuff because um, he has to like how it feels in order for him to agree to use it. So that kind of is a testament of how much I like this sunscreen if this is the one that I used on my husband. Okay, I'm gonna talk about my actual like favorite, favorite period sunscreen. This is the Dermatology Broad Spectrum 45 and these are both in the old packaging. Since, since then, Dermatology has um, repackaged this to look sleeker it's in a white bottle it, it's like has less wording on the packaging and stuff but i've gone through two of these i've gone through many of these actually um i actually have a backup of this already that i'm using and their tinted sunscreen as well is really great so this is a 12 percent zinc oxide and 7.5 octanoxate combination sunscreen it has an spf of 45 which is high spf we love it and it is truly like a thin moisturizer feel it is lovely Clearly, I've gone through, I think, four of these by now, like in the last couple of years, combined with like all the other sunscreen that I've used up. Oh, this one was good too. I'm, I'm talking about all my favorite ones first because I see it and I like, my hand just grabs for them first. So the Elta MD UV Elements Broad Spectrum 44. Again, SPF above 40, we love. And this is a tinted sunscreen. It's actually pretty deep of a tint. You can kind of see from <laughs> the messiness around the cap. It's pretty significant coverage for a tinted sunscreen. I would say it's about light coverage, not sheer. I use this up as like a foundation replacement. You know what? That's probably the reason why I don't have a foundation empty this year is because I was using this as my foundation. Wow. Again, like super silky feel. Um, it feels like a lotion. It actually feels pretty similar to the dermatology sunscreen that I was just talking about. And I have, again, another one of this. So actually, I guess the theme from my empties this year is that uh, these empties include a lot of repurchases, which is great. I think that's very valuable for y'all to be watching, but cool, 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 cool. All right, well, I have an empty of this one and I have another one that I'm using currently. This, okay, so the Bliss Black Star Invisible Daily Sunscreen. I would say this is like a full dupe, a full dupe for the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. Um, the Bliss does have like a teeny bit of lavender in it in terms of fragrance, but very, um, it's very subtle but the texture of these are very, very similar. That kind of really, really lightweight, almost, it's gonna be kind of weird the way I describe it, but it almost feels plastic-y, like just the way it is. It's very, very, very smooth. I really don't know if that description does anything for y'all, but this Bliss Black Star, I actually like better than the Paula's Choice. And that is because if you have oily skin, this is like the least oily sunscreen that I have ever tried that's not like a full-on like, silicone sunscreen, like the super goop ones. I actually recommended this to one of my friends from residency and he's super obsessed with sunscreen and he has gone through two tubes of this in the last six months since I recommended it to him. So yeah, that's a 
It is also available at Target, so very, uh, very easy to find. Okay, and then I have these other sunscreens that are left. These are the ones that I don't really like as much. So this is the, the Dr. Dennis Gross. It's a full mineral sunscreen with like uh, titanium 4.9% and zinc 4.4%. SPF 50, it's pretty good, but this is kind of a thicker mineral sunscreen. I actually hear Hiram talk about this sunscreen a lot and say it's like super lightweight, like such a nice texture, like blah, blah, blah. And I would kind of disagree with that. I would pretty confidently disagree with that. It has a pretty strong white cast actually. And it has a, a bit of a draggy texture where you rub it in and it's like pulling at your skin. So not my favorite. I used it up just because it's a sunscreen and I am fine using up sunscreens even if I don't really like them that much, but not, not my favorite. First, this is a tinted sunscreen, fully mineral. It's a 15.2% zinc oxide, SPF 35. And I really did like this as a tinted sunscreen because it is like fully, fully sheer coverage, but it is not oily. But the thing with the first is that the pigment or the consistency of the product itself is kind of uh, grainy. <laughs> So I, I did like it at first, I used it up, but it's it's not my favorite now. My new favorite tinted sunscreens are either the Elta MD UV Elements or the Dermatology in the Tinted Moisturizer version. Another fully mineral sunscreen is the Biosense Squalane and Zinc Sheer Mineral Sunscreen. This is sheer. This is actually like a really good in terms of no white cast, uh, but it, it feels pretty oily. It is a very, very, very moisturizing sunscreen. I actually got one of these and gave it to my mom. So she would use a sunscreen in place of a moisturizer because she like doesn't use sunscreen. <laughs> but uh, really good in terms of no white cast. It is very moisturizing though, so not quite my taste, uh, but it would work for other people. I know a lot of people really like this sunscreen. Okay, uh, Super Goop Play. Oh, this is just the plain everyday sunscreen, but this one felt too thick and lotion-y for me. Like, not, not in terms of a moisturizer lotion, but like, a sunscreen lotion it was how it felt so not my favorite it kind of made me feel oily my skin felt a little suffocated so I just used up the sample and oh this Misha essence this is another one that I used together with my husband very 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 lightweight like thin lotion like the good kind of lotion it's a little fragranced um, smells a little bit like flowers but otherwise really really nice texture it is like the essence of uh, Korean sunscreen, kind of a lot of Korean sunscreens are formulated this way. It's, it's pretty good. These are all the sunscreens I used up. It's pretty impressive. I have been using sunscreen regularly. It's good, like woo, good on me that I have this many sunscreen empties over the last 12 months. I do have one teeny weeny category, which is like fragrance, I guess. I, I have these little samples that I threw into my empties bag. This is not empty. It's the Marc Jacobs Daisy. I threw it in here because I definitely used up like two little sample sprays of this, uh, but I couldn't find the empties anywhere. So I'm just telling you that I used up a few samples of Daisy and I have actually bought the uh, pen spray. I, there was a Daisy like trio of pen sprays that Ulta and Sephora had for the holidays. So I did repurchase those. Um, I like Daisy. It's a very, very like college-y, like classic scent, but it's very pretty. A lot of people liked it for a reason. Oh, Calvin Klein Woman. This is another one that I actually, used up this sample and I bought the pen spray of it, the 0.33 or the 0.3 fluid ounces, and I lost it. This one smells like eucalyptus and it's just very fresh, but not flowery fresh and not fruity fresh. It was very unique. Dang, I kind of want to buy this perfume again now <laughs> that I'm looking at it, but girl, girl, I have bought like so many perfumes in the last two months like a really embarrassing amount of perfumes. I keep on wanting to do a perfume collection video. Let me know if y'all would be interested in that. Oh, I also have a sample of the Victor and Rolf Flower Balm. I'm holding this up as if y'all can see the lettering, but you really cannot. So Victor and Rolf Flower Balm. It was a little too strong for me, not my favorite, but I kept it in my car just for days that I forgot perfume. YSL Black Opium, I really like this one. And my husband likes it too, ooh la la, so. This is probably gonna be my next full-size purchase of perfume. And I kind of wanted to show you just some of the perfume things. So my, my go-to perfume for, I don't know, even know how long is the Versace Bright Crystal. This is in like the full three fluid ounce size. And I remember mentioning this in, I think it was like my March 2020 favorites <laughs> or something. So this is um, very much like a lovely, pretty scent. I love peony, I love freesia. Any any perfume that has peony or freesia in it, I am just like on board with that. Let me just show you a couple other kind of perfumes that I've bought that's in a similar vein or vibe as this. So this was actually sent to me. This is, I got this from Octoly. 
Uh, this is the Rituals, as in like the body care line. The Fleurs de Himalaya. This is a perfume that's really strong on Peony, similarly to the Versace, but also um, has a lot of like deep musk. Like it's actually a little too much musk for me. <laughs> So what I will do on days that I want this Versace perfume to last a little bit longer is I'll do a spray of this Rituals perfume and like a walkthrough spray of Versace on top of that. And it just combines to be like the perfect amount of musk for me. Um, and I also, da -da -da, my first big girl full size purchase in a really long time in terms of perfume is the Chloe Eau de Parfum. I have the travel size, I've used up like half of it by now and oh, this Versace Bryce Crystal and the Chloe, Chloe, I am a basic girl, but these just make me feel so beautiful. So I bought a full size, a full size, as in a one fluid ounce of the Chloe perfume. And here's another one I've been liking. I'm just, I'm just, I guess this is kind of thrown in as a favorite. You can tell I like pink perfumes. That's kind of my vibe. So I have the Skylar Pink Canyon perfume. They actually sent this to me in PR, which was super nice. And uh, I really like it. This is like a pink perfume, but it's very different from these. It's not flowery at all. So the notes in the Pink Canyon are grapefruit, pink salt, and cedar, and it smells really nice. Like, I love it. I also bought some Dossier perfumes. I bought the dupe for Aqua de Joya. I actually bought a full size of Ocean de Joya. I bought two uh, perfumes from Ulta in like the span of a week. <laughs> I bought a ch like a ton of pen sprays. I have, oh, Jimmy Choo, I want you, whatever. I mean, this is like a whole different video. Um, I'm gonna let that go, but. Yeah, perfume. Okay, bye. Ta-da, that's everything I used up in a year. And actually, I actually don't know if I'm gonna include the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser, uh, but if I did not include it, I literally, I have a 16 ounce size of that baby, like huge, and it has just the smallest bit left. So technically that's not like an empty, but it's so close, but I couldn't finish it up before this video, but I, I did go through like a massive value size of that cleanser, almost. I'm going to try to do this video again next year, and I also expect that it will have a lot of the same products, but some of the stuff I talk about in this video I straight up don't use anymore. So it's always so interesting to see how the contents of this video changes year to year. I say as if I've done this for more than one year, <laughs> but I will do it for more than one year in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. I hope it was fun, and uh, I always forget the outro of my videos. Go, oh my god. Remember that y'all are my treasure. Woo! Find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourselves. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.